Well, hey Dave, we're back here at the residential remodel project for another segment of our Wood Tech series. All right, Jim. Yeah. So you got a few tools on the table here and you're going to talk to us about biscuit joiners, which is something I know very little about and I'm really excited to get to know. So I'll let you take it away. All right. Well, a lot of people think that this is only for cabinet makers and it's really a very useful tool in all kinds of remodeling too, okay. um, as well as obviously construction in a shop. But let's, let's talk about what the joint it makes actually is. And we call this a spline joint. So essentially, if you can imagine, I have a piece of plywood here, you've got a groove in one side, a groove in the other, and you get a bridge that goes across it. Okay. Okay. Now that bridge, um, when we often use this, we're gonna just use this piece of plywood as an example. And if you pull it a little bit apart, mm -hmm. you'll see the grain is for this spline yeah. is going this way, which would mean you could snap it. Mm -hmm. Now, if you flip the piece over completely, you see the grain is going across the joint. So it's much harder to break, right? And spline joints are very common. The problem is, that it's very hard to take, for instance, a counter edge that you're putting a piece of wood on, take a 12 foot counter <laughs> and run it along vertically on a table saw. Yeah. So they came up with this uh, back in um, the 50s and they came up with a, a stationary machine and they called it lamello and it's lamell is German for thin plate. Yeah. And they would make these plunges in with a circular blade and they had this piece of wood spaced perfectly and it would go right into the curve. Now the curve was 530 seconds. All biscuit joiners make a 530 seconds of an inch curve. I'm assuming that's probably a couple, maybe three millimeters. And at any rate, with this kind of a joint, you can put things in alignment. So if you take that now and just flip one piece over and put it back together, what do you notice? Do you see how they're not flush anymore? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So you have to register or align from the same face when you're making this. Interesting. Okay. So these lamello biscuits, we call these biscuits, these thin plates. Oh, and if you be so kind, just break it. I think I can. I don't know if I can break this. Oh, there you go. Right. And oh. if you'll notice, the grain is crossways. On an angle. Yeah, it's on an angle because you can put these in almost vertical as well. Okay. So it's trying to give you something that's not, something that's going to crack open okay. and it's not going to be a complete bridge crossways because this may go in in a variety of no different... No matter how you're using it, yep. whatever orientation. Yep. Okay. And I, I will tell you these biscuits don't taste very good, but they are compressed beech wood and they tend to be beech. Even when we make them here, we'll use American beech, but the beech is kind of like Europe's oak. <laughs> you think of an Ikea cabinet and, okay. and furnishings, most of it's beech. Okay. So this is compressed beech. And this is problematic for me because my shop is unheated. So when these things reside you know, out in my shop, yeah. they tend to swell and it's very difficult to put it into that 530 second skirt. Um, yeah. So basically keep your powder dry, but keep your biscuits much drier. So okay. silly question, but do they make like a, what do they make for cigars? Like a humidor or something? They make something like that for biscuits? Oh, I, I, I wish. I've tried it in the microwave and ovens and uh, oh. yeah, my wife got kind of mad at me one time. She smelled burning wood and <laughs> it was me trying to dry out the biscuits. So they, once they swell, are you kind of... You can sand it? them a little bit. There's even a biscuit squasher, which I've been very seriously thinking about buying, wow. but it's okay. fairly expensive. Wow. Um, but at any rate, these these are amazing little tools. The the standard for this, um, they come in a 0, 10, and 20 side size, I should say. And this is what most builders know. The zero is eight millimeters wide. When you plunge in, okay. it leaves this little football shape, okay? Yeah. The arc of the of the tool, and that's eight millimeters wide. Then for the 10, it's 10 millimeters wide, and for the 20, it's 20 millimeters wide. Okay. But there's a lot of things you can do with these. So a there's actually a little blade in that tool. Yes. Can you show us that? I sure can. So essentially, it's like a grinder. It's It's an angle grinder and it's on a spring load, and you can change how deep it goes by adjusting this small turret here. Turret goes up against the stop. This is set on a number 20. Okay. I could set it for maximum, okay. this is what they call it, and then you can see it goes all the way through. 
That looks like one of our rip blades we were just talking about. It's it's very aggressive, and you can also see at the back. In order not to have it kick back, it's got that anti kickback spur. Nice. The cool thing about this particular one is it's very easy to change to a different blade, would give you different size biscuits. Okay. And the original Lamello. So what ended up happening? That stationary machine became a portable machine in 1969, and it just took cabinet makers by storm. Everyone wanted one, and this is the original, the Lamello. They come in a variety of different uh, uh, shapes and sizes, mm -hmm. lots of different cutters, and most of the accessories that we think of for biscuit joining actually come from Lamello. Uh, the problem is it's a Swiss tool and anything like Swiss Marine or medical is automatically five times as much as it should okay. be. It's pretty expensive. Significant investment. A very significant investment. Okay. For a cabinet shop, it's pretty much de rigueur. You gotta have them. Okay. But these, I can buy one of these Porter cables or basically I can buy four of these Porter cables for one of these. Okay. And they're really good machines too. So we can talk about the differences between. So if I buy that set, I graduated from the school, I get a job with a local remodeler, I buy that. Does it come with all the blades with it, the different sizes? Good question. It actually does come with this second blade. Okay, so yeah. just two. So really, it allows me to do two or three or four biscuit sizes. Right. Okay. Now with the Lamello, you can change out a lot of things. There's patches and everything. Okay. Let me give you a little bit of an idea of what we're looking at here. Okay. So, oh wow. if you take a look, we not only have much larger biscuits, okay, the S6, we have our 20, our 10, and our zero. We have the sub-zero biscuit, <laughs> and so then we have a face frame biscuit, and okay. you can see we've got them for inside miters. Now, these are just the wooden biscuits, too, and again, wow. when you break it, it's always cross grain. Okay. but there's some other uh, areas that would be really cool. This one is a clamping biscuit. It's kind of like a, a shark. The teeth go backwards, so what you would do is if it's an area that you can't make a clamp, you know, something like maybe a soffit or something like yeah. that, and you can't get a clamp behind it, you would put a glue biscuit, that would be one of the wood ones, a clamping biscuit, a glue biscuit, a clamping biscuit. Mm -hmm. And then they even have it, this is for solid surface materials like Gibraltar, Shirelle, um, uh, Corian. And the other ones that they have are pretty amazing. These are just a couple of ideas here. Very much like what you'd see in what we call, used to call knockdown furniture. The industry didn't like the word KD, so they said, let's make it nicer. And they made it RTA, ready to assemble. Ready to assemble. So you think of getting a flat box from Ikea and putting it together. Sure. These are RTA fittings, but there's no reason that a builder can't make them okay. if it has to be taken apart all the time. Okay. All right. And um, the, the fun never stops with Mellow. They actually have this new P system, which again is simply a larger form. And they actually have, you just take it with an Allen wrench and you can put it apart, take and put it together in a variety of different forms. Wow. So it's a very, very useful tool. Boy, I'll say. So I graduated from school, residential construction, carpentry. I buy my Porter cable tool. What are some of the most common things I would use on a project like this, start to finish? Well, let's say that you're installing cabinets and you need to add on something and you want to make sure that they're dead flush, okay? That would be a, a situation. You could make, if you had to make a cabinet on site, it would be a very simple way to get everything to line up really yeah. closely. Uh, and uh, maybe it's a counter edge. Uh, for me, when I'm installing cabinetry, for instance, I'll actually throw a biscuit in the top and the bottom of an upper or lower cabinet. When I put them together, I have to fasten them together, usually with some kind of connector bolt. Yeah. This will hold it perfectly okay. flush. Okay. So that that's one option. I've even heard of one time where windows got delivered. And of course, windows have a drip edge on the sill. Yeah. And the drip edges were not cut. Yeah. So the, the apprentice in this case mm -hmm. actually plunged in and went along to create that drip edge. Wow. It's pretty cool. Wow. If I wanted to... Uh pre-assemble my exterior window trim. Would I use a biscuit joiner? Yep. Or would and I use a preg tool or what's, or either? You can or? use pocket holes, you can use both. The thing with the pocket hole, of course, you have to have it exactly aligned, okay? okay? But what's nice is to actually throw in a biscuit, whether you would put in adhesive or not, uh -huh. throw in a biscuit, keep the alignment, and then go ahead and actually throw your pocket holes in. Okay. So that that's one option. Uh, 
it just it never seems to be on you're always going to find new uses for this yeah. now one thing that's really big is um that people don't understand a lot of times let's say you're putting on some trim and you need to make your miters line up perfectly so the nice part about a biscuit is you can actually move side to side you can't move vertically but side to side i got an example here for you okay. so here's one with two oh, biscuits okay okay and if you'll notice, when you put them together, we always mark across the joint, only across the joint, slide it side to side. This? Yep. You've oh. got about a quarter inch leeway, wow. which means when you're trying to make your joint up nice and tight, you can actually keep shaving it, say it's on a miter saw, and, mm -hmm. uh, and then put it back together. And we call it sneaking up on the cut, you know, so wow. basically sneaking up until you've got exactly the um, kind of joint that you want. Super. So there's some latitude. Where there is no latitude and you can feel it, you can't go up and down. You can't go okay. vertically. What would be some of the maybe less well-known or common uses? I think you told me about how you sometimes buy trim for a job site and then what you do on site. Exactly. Most of the time for me, I'll order tens. It's uh, pretty standard. But if I have to order specified lengths or spec lengths, yeah. that's going to cost me more. So if I have a 16-foot room, I'll just order tens. And... The first day, I'm usually doing a lot of setup for the job. I'm putting down my protection. Um, and Work what stations. I will end up doing is wherever I needed that 16, and maybe a couple places in the house, then what I'll do is I'll go ahead and biscuit those together that night. Okay. The next day, it's almost like treating it as one piece of wood. And is that strictly a paint grade scenario, or do you do that with You can do it natural in natural finish. finish. And okay. oftentimes, what I've done is actually done a scarf joint. On a, on a big piece of molding. Gotcha. And by the time you get done, if you clamp it up correctly, it's really hard to tell yeah. where that joint is. Yeah, very cool. Are there any things that you should really stay away from doing with a biscuit joint? Either it'll fail over time or it's not safe or what have you. Is there any kind of connection in a... No, not at all. Okay. I mean, when you think about the adhesives we have now, we are so fortunate. Okay. Um, and any of the synthetic resin glues are incredible. Um, you could use epoxide resins or polyurethanes. Yeah. You can use pretty much anything with a biscuit. Okay. The one thing about the, um, the biscuit, normally we tend to use a waterborne adhesive, like a yellow carpenter's glue. Okay. So when the yellow carpenter's glue gets after this biscuit, it swells the biscuit in the slot. And once it does, it doesn't go down. Okay. So this is, it's pretty impressive. The joint is really strong. I was going to suggest you might want to step on a couple of joints we made up last night. Sure. Okay. Let's give it a go. So Jim, nice job breaking everything. That's great. Um, one thing that people are often surprised at, if you can see, we only glued where the biscuits went in, but it's pretty rare that the biscuits break. This one broke a little bit on one side, but still they tend to hang together and it's pretty strong. They sure do. Wow. And doing it on solid wood, you can see we actually broke out the wood and the biscuits didn't break. Holy cow, you're right. See that up there, right? Now this, this does lead to an interesting area. We just did this last night and you'll notice that the glue is still wet. Yeah. It takes a while for the air to actually get to it uh, and for the glue to dry, which is why you never want to actually finish something the next day. Because when the glue shrinks, let's say you sanded it, you'll have a little bit of a divot there. Um, so for furniture makers and everything, they understand this. It may take seven days for that glue to actually dry, and then you can actually go ahead and surface it. Wow. Yeah. So uh, obviously we've got a pretty cool environment temperature-wise. We've been running 35 to 50 degrees. Uh -huh. If you didn't have additional heat, how would you approach this topic? Actually, I, I don't know that the heat is much of it's more evaporation, but when you've yeah. got a closed joint, it's awful hard to evaporate anything. Yeah. Uh, it just seems like the water tends to migrate. Okay. Awesome. That's great. And the other option, of course, is to use an epoxide resin or something that's uh, catalyzed, and therefore you don't need to worry about this. But it does make, because it, it swells up in the joint, it makes for an incredibly strong joint. Well, Dave, I'm so glad we did this segment on biscuit joinery. It's wonderful. Thank you. Looking forward to part two. Welcome, Jim. <laughs> <laughs>